Welcome back to Web Certain TV. I'm Gemma Houghton and today I'm joined by Marcus Tandler from OnPageOrg. We're going to be talking about Google Search Console and why it's really an underutilized tool by many SEOs. So hi Marcus. Hi. Thank Gemma. you for being here. Thank you for inviting me. Always, Always fun to be here. Yeah, so maybe a strange topic for us to be covering Google Search Console. Mm -hmm. Maybe think fairly straightforward, basic, but how do you find that it's been used by SEOs and do you think that everyone's using it to the best? Um, I think what, what I got to say about Google Search Console is that everybody says, okay, if there's one tool you got to use, it's Google Search Console. Mm -hmm. Me the same, even when somebody asked me about onpage.org, the first thing I asked, do you use Google Search Console? Because it is the best SEO SEO tool uh, yeah. out there because Google gives you just, a, it's a huge treasure chest of data um, for you. And I don't, I don't think that people are not using it. I think like if you ask the people who's using Google Search Console, all hands go up, everybody yeah. uses it. But when you dig a little bit deeper, it's mostly like, oh yeah, I want to get the messages from Google and maybe the indexing stuff. But they really stay a little bit away from the search analytics because it's just maybe not very intuitive to work with it and also understand yeah. the the data they give you and also how they aggregate the data and that kind of stuff and so people tend to stay away a little bit uh, and especially in Germany uh, where we have like um, lots of great tools like like Systrix search metrics so people basically use scrape data to see how their how their yeah. site uh, is, is performing in Google search and and there you have Google giving like the real data how yeah. it really is and not just a at like a fixed position, but an average position, impressions, clicks, click-through rates. So you can really, it's really actionable to really see, okay, here I'm ranking eight-ish and I don't have a really good click-through rate. Let's work on that click-through rate because it has so many impressions. Here's really potential. Um, basically giving some some common patterns I see quite frequently when working with Search Console data um, and basically explaining to the people you know what what that might mean and um, and what you get out of it what what's actually what what you should do if you see something like this um, so what what do you where is the starting point then obviously like you said everybody uses it they're set up mm -hmm. but what what are the first, what are the main features that you think should be you know de people should dig into first to really get good insights um, well it also depends on on what your website uh, really is using if you're using href lang tags so if you have a international website um, and using hreflang tags on your site um, to tell Google um, the different international versions. Um, Google Search Console is a great uh, resource for finding um, missing return tags because you always have to basically point to each other and if you don't yeah. point to the version, uh, Google will neglect it. So mm -hmm. you can see um, um, where you're missing some return tags. If you are, uh, if you have rich card results, so moving on from rich snippets to rich cards, yeah. um, and you actually uh, use this opportunity Google gives you, they can also show you the performance of rich cards. Um, so you really have like the real Google data on how your website is displayed within Google. Um, so uh, that's definitely a great feature. Also stuff like the Robert's TXT tester. I mean, you have so many people that really don't care all too much about the robots txt which is like always like a little bit weird because it's it's basically your domain's house rules right yeah and 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 so this is a very important thing and this is always the first thing i look uh, when i'm auditing a website and 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 there you can go in and can really see okay this is really set up the way i want it to to be set up um and uh, also crawling errors, uh, of course, if you're not leveraging a crawl-based tool, this is definitely a great resource to see where Google has problems um, with crawling your website, um, where you throw lots of 404 errors um, that you uh, fix or uh, convert into a 410 that they just uh, uh, don't show up anymore in the search console. And um, what else is in there? There's so much stuff in there. <laughs> um, but of course, I mean, the main reason uh, is still legit, just Google giving you, um, if you have a manual penalty, mm -hmm. if you have problems with your site, you might get hacked. This is something yeah. very valuable that Google's providing that if your site's been hacked, you actually get an email from them. Um, and also, um, if you if you or your agencies uh, like uh, doing some dodgy stuff, you will also see this in Search Console. So I think this is a the great way um, to to keep in touch what what Google actually thinks of your website. And how quickly do changes kind of show up in that? So if you you know mm -hmm. you look at the data, you say you know for example you see an issue with four hundred fours, and you go out and you fix that, or you do some optimization around a certain page. How quickly should you be able to see whether Google's picked that up in the console? And 
Um, this actually depends on your website itself, how, how, how often crawled. you get crawled, yeah. how, uh, how thoroughly uh, Google crawls your website, and, and each of the four four showing up needs to be crawled at least one more time to, to be, um, so, yeah. so it either drops out or gets shown up again. Um, so it, it, it really depends. Uh, this, by the way, also something Google shows you, the crawl rate, so how many pages uh, actually uh, Google crawled, although mm -hmm. you really got to differentiate if, the, if you have like 9,000 URLs and it says, okay, Okay, they, they're picking up 3,000 a day. Okay, so it takes like three days to crawl my whole website. No, not necessarily because it's, 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 it's not that it's like every website, but this is, I think, very important to really see what Google is crawling. So they might crawl my, my shop extensively, yeah. my blog extensively, but they just don't crawl my forum because mm -hmm. they think uh, it's, it's, it's low quality or something like this. Um, and this is also an interesting insight, I guess. Um, so they don't put it granularly, but still you get a good idea on how it's working. And also with the, um, if you uh, if you have like slow performing pages, if your page is like responding very slowly, you also see like a drop in the crawl rate, which is also uh, an indication for you like, okay, I've got to speed up my site, you know, it's really important. Uh, and uh, this is the kind of stuff you can see in there, which is very valuable. So you mentioned you know, that a lot of people will use other tools, mm -hmm. um, of which there are many, instead of using Google Search Console. So, kind of in the in the case that actually you can get so much of this data from Search Console, and obviously it's Google telling you exactly what they're doing. Yeah. At which point do you then bring in the other tools, and kind of what extra value do they add mm -hmm. on top of that? Um, yeah, the the only downside to Google Search Console is just about your domain, right? Yeah. So you have the best possible data, yeah. but it's only for your domain, of mm -hmm. course. Uh, and so if I want to do competitive research, I have to use another tool, yeah. right? And this is really where uh, where Searchmetrics, Systrix, SEMrush, um, whatever, just bring amazing value that you can just throw in any URL and you can really see, okay, how is it how is it in the index? Just given a, a general idea um, of the of the domain. Um, which you just can't get in any other place. And then when you sort of take that even further, then you you know you've got all these then tools to choose from. How do you how you know what criteria would you use to then determine which of those is the best fit for your site and your business? Um, so let me speak not as the CEO of uh, yeah. onpage.org, I mean, but more yeah. of an SEO practitioner. Yeah. Uh, uh, although we don't keep compete with the research tools uh, yeah. since we don't have any research aspect in onpage.org, uh, but um, I think in most cases um, it's really what what this what tool appeals to you and how you work with the stuff. Of course, data quality is very important. You have tools that are um, a little bit cheaper, but also just don't care about the data quality as mm -hmm. much, which is very hard, I guess, uh, for a lot of people to really judge the data quality. Yeah. And you just see basically the, the sales guy tells me the same thing. He has the same fancy suit as the other sales guy. Yeah. And they tell me the same stuff. Um, and uh, and most of the time they talk about quantity, you know, how big their index is, la, la, mm -hmm. la, la, la. Um, but it's about the quality. Um, so... Um, it's definitely should should uh, should first maybe like do some tests on the stuff that you really like the validity of the data that you can really that like really trust in the data because if you do if you want to do an informed decision after mm -hmm. looking at one of these tools and really do uh, do something on your page. Um, you, you you just have to trust that data, and this is I think the first thing that you really trust the tool and the data that that they uh, that they give out, uh, and then it's mostly like like really what tool you like, what you like better, maybe like a certain feature what somebody does very well, um, which another tool does not provide like this, um, and with me it's it's really just. Uh, um, a habit, so to speak. Like, yeah. I always do this in this tool. I always do that in that tool. Um, okay, I'm in a comfortable position that I don't, might not have to pay for all of the tools, so I can <laughs> just use this and yeah. that for, for different uh, for different reasons. But I think this is the most important part that you really think, what's important for me? What's important in my job? Um, so what, what kind of stuff uh, do I want to do? And really see um, how the the tools stack up to to your relevant set on, on what you want to achieve. Um, so it's very hard to give like a this yeah. is like the perfect tool yeah, because they it do it all. They have all the legitimacy. They have all big clients um, who use them effectively. But it's it really comes down to do you like apples or pears, yeah. right? So I prefer apples. <laughs> And that's also the point with tools, also, you know, you say that you've really got to think about what it is in mm -hmm. terms of which tool you use, but also which data from those tools you take, because there is so much that it can be totally overwhelming. It's really, Absolutely. you have to focus very detailed on what information is going to provide you the best, you know, results and the best insights to, to drive. 
what Absolutely. you're doing otherwise. Yeah. Some have the best like visibility data, some have the best keyword research data, some have the best social data. Mm -hmm. and, and this is what's important for you. And then you can say, okay, I don't care about that that much, but, but this is very important for me. And then you should choose uh, that tool ultimately. And how do you think things will, you know, we see so much change and so rapidly in search and in technology and digital and in general. What do you think is kind of can be the next stage of tools what are the next level that they're going to offer on top of what they do now i mean i'm asking you this as someone who has a tool so you may not want to tell me yeah, what you're developing exactly but... what we do right i mean like uh, we, we're shaping the future yeah. with, with onpage.org uh um like what we are doing uh, more and more these days is integrating different sets of data mm -hmm. uh, especially google search console and google analytics basically make it more accessible make it more easy for people to use with this yeah. because I really with search console this is this is like an ongoing theme for the last years really um, and so we wanted to find like a way for people which it is still a little bit of overwhelming right it's so mm -hmm. much data and it's really like you have to really how do I interpret certain data yeah. what do certain values really mean and stuff like this and this is what we're trying to do make it more easy more accessible and also mash it together with the data that we collect mm -hmm. to just give you a a much more quicker insight um and uh, but this is this is really just us um and uh what else is coming? Um, yeah, I mean, if I would know, right? Yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> yeah. But I guess whatever happens, tools, data, it's only ever going to get more important. Being able to really see what's going on in the wider scheme of things, not only on your own site, is going to be what ultimately helps businesses succeed and yeah, do better. And I think maybe one thing which is more important than the dude just, just giving you all the data. This is also what we have done for the past years, just, just giving you this enormous amount of data. Um, and what we are trying... Uh, to do more and more is giving you like really like real actionable kpis right like yeah. really trying to, to to give you a kpi and not just like the whole range of data but but also like where am i right for example with search console we try to find what how much of the potential your website actually has how much do you actually um reap right now is it the right yeah. word um yeah sorry, my english um, so if you have, we could be called that OPI, so organic performance index, basically mm -hmm. saying, okay, you maybe you have a performance index of 20, meaning that of your website, you really need to optimize those single pages, really getting, move up the ranks, making more of the impressions you're getting, mm -hmm. right? Or you have an OPI of, of 90, which means you have like, you're using your full potential already. You need new keywords, new niches, new, new, new themes, whatever yeah. to, to, uh, broaden up, um, your website. So, and I think this is the important part, like really already giving you some advice with a KPI and not just giving you all the data yeah. and basically for you uh, that you have to make uh, this decision yourself, but also giving you like an, a pinpoint. This is yeah, this guiding is people in the right yeah. direction of where and they're going to see are, the best results. And what we are playing around with a lot is machine learning because now we have over 300,000 users. Um, we anonymize the data, we aggregate the data and just trying to find with, with help of machine learning, trying to find stuff that's not visible to the human eye. Um, mm -hmm. So it's just vast amounts of data and trying to do these learnings for each individual um, customer that they like really on the on everything we see, you know, this is mm -hmm. where you should look, you know, of everything we see, this is how you are really doing you know? And um, and I think this is the, the, the most interesting part, uh, also looking into the future, working with machine learning to make more of this data and, and make it more easy, more accessible. It's not about like these huge quantities of data anymore. It's like really, I want actionable decisions. Yeah. And this is what people want when using a tool. Great. Well, thanks for talking to me today. It's good to talk to you. Thank you very much. Ben.